All right, bottom line, we are already over 50% of this goes through. A top combined rate of state and local income taxes in states like uh, New York, where the top combined rate would be about 52%. In California, north of 56%. Uh, New Jersey, north of 51%. In other words, we are there now if this goes through. Let's get the read from Senator Steve Daines, the Montana Republican, sits on the Senate Finance Committee. Um, I don't know what fair share is still, uh, Senator, but... Uh, we're, we're raising it and on a regular basis now. What do you make of this? Neil, the first 100 days of the Biden administration has been breathtaking to see how far to the left they've lurched with these massive spending increases, the Green New Deal, and now looking for massive tax increases. You look back to 2017 when we cut taxes. That resulted in the best economy that I've seen in my lifetime. Remember where we were in early 2020, just prior to the pandemic. Record levels of low unemployment, including for minorities. Record levels of wage growth for the middle class. Why? Because we cut taxes. And what Biden is suggesting here, these massive increases to capital gains, is exactly the wrong thing to do if you want to keep job growth occurring and wages increasing. Uh, it, it's shocking, Neil, to see the fact that if you add of course, then this new rate that Biden proposes, plus the Medicare 3.8 percent surcharge, plus the, the state taxes, will have capital gains rates north of 50 percent. That is going in absolutely the wrong direction. If anything we should be doing is we should be cutting capital gains taxes, not more than doubling them. All right, we should explain for those who want to know why we arrive at the 43.4 percent top figure is returning it to the top rate of 39.6 percent. The 3.8 percent surcharge the rich have to pay to continue funding Obamacare gets gets you there. But you're right. When you add some of these other things, you're well over 50 percent. You know, for all of that taxing, though, Senator, I do notice that uh, the Biden administration will fall shy of paying for all of the, the spending that it wants. In other words, about two thirds of it would be paid by these taxes on the very wealthy, which leads me to the, the inescapable conclusion that you either have to raise taxes more on the wealthy or, or you know, expand it out to include people who aren't so wealthy to reach that three and a quarter trillion dollars in spending costs. What do you think? Well, look what's happening now within our own country. Uh, the people who are out there in the cut growing jobs, businesses, you know, the, the, the people that are that are actually seeing good results in their business, they're fleeing states like California and New York. They're going to low tax states like Texas in Florida. The same thing will happen here on a global basis with Biden wanting to raise taxes across on virtually every front, including capital gains and, and the corporate tax rates. You're going to start seeing businesses moving overseas. This is not the right thing to do to keep American jobs here in our country. Uh, and because this is a global competition, we've got to take a look at what China is doing. We're going to have higher tax rates than China. I, mean, I just wonder if Biden is maybe his new motto is making China great again. We've got to be thinking about this. We look forward here for the next 10 or 20 years. This is a big mistake. It's a big fight we've got right now in Washington. Do you think that any spending plan should be paid for? Because, you know, during a lot of the Trump years, Democrats say, well, they didn't do that. They, they, they went ahead and proposed spending, built up our deficits and debt at an alarming rate. So who are Republicans to talk? What do you say? Yeah, no, I mean, it's actually a fair point. Uh, Republicans have not been doing a great job either of keeping spending in control, but that's where it comes back to is spending is the problem, Neil. Uh, we're collecting plenty of tax revenue. It's the spending that's out of control. Every chart you look at will show that. And in fact, we're looking at this infrastructure plan at the moment. There is a path forward with a very significant you know, $600 billion plan the Republicans are talking about. We could use some of the COVID relief dollars that have already been allocated or redirect them. They're not needed. Our states are doing fine. We passed $6 trillion of COVID relief out into this economy. We can redirect some of those dollars for an infrastructure plan. So there's an example we can do something here without raising taxes and still take care of crumbling infrastructure in our country. In other words, your smaller plan that Republicans are looking at in the vicinity of about $600 billion, it does include user fees and tolls and that sort of thing, but that's the extent of it, right? Yeah, and it, we don't need to raise taxes. I, 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 you know, think about the fundamental question here. You ask somebody on the street, do you want to pay more taxes? The answer is no. Uh, we're paying enough taxes. 
if you, if you again look at the trend lines, it is a spending problem, not a revenue problem. That's what has to be addressed. And we have got to face up to that in Washington. It's got to be bipartisan. In fact, one of the first uh, bills I ever introduced into Congress was we should stop paying members of Congress if they don't balance the budget. Hit the members of Congress in their pocketbooks before it starts hitting the pocketbooks of the American people. We'll watch it very closely. Senator Daines, always great seeing you. Thank you for coming in on a Saturday, as always. Senator Steve Daines uh, sits on the Finance Committee. Uh, we'll have a very big role in this, uh, depending on how far it goes.